Hello everyone, it's April here. Welcome back to another video. We haven't had a video for a couple of weeks. I am sorry about that, I got really busy, but I hope that you enjoy today's little video. It's a little walk art combo. So there's gonna be a little bit of a mix. This is the day that we went to Gummer's Howe, which is about 20 minutes away from us. And we had no idea what to expect. We'd never been there before, but it was absolutely beautiful. The day started out really foggy and we were worried we wouldn't be able to see anything, but we rose above the fog and it was glorious, sunny and blue skies. And it was absolutely amazing. We saw this view on the way down and we didn't realize it was actually opposite the car park, but we stopped and took some photos because it was just amazing the way the land was coming up through the fog. Martin was having a great time. We're at Grandma's Howe car park and we had to stop a couple of times just to take in the beautiful view behind us of all the fog. Now we're going to head up for our walk. Uh, we haven't done this yet. I think it's an easy one. The guy at the sports shop said it was super easy. So yeah, we're going to try it out. Hopefully there's still some fog up there, which would be nice. I actually filmed this footage for a blog that Martin and I want to do. We've made the website and everything, but we haven't actually started it yet. So this was gonna be a little bit of a blog, like of the walk and kind of show people where to go and stuff. Turns out we went the completely wrong way. So we didn't actually end up making this into a, into a blog post. And I thought it might be a nice little art video instead. It's very sunny up here. So we got to the top of the mountain, hill, mound. And it looks like we are on the wrong, the wrong mountain. So I think we should be over there. We are the blue dot and we were meant to be the red dot. So we walked in the completely wrong direction. But I did see this lovely view while we were up there. I mean, it was really beautiful on that side of the hill anyway. So I took the first photo, which was like the trees and the mist and everything coming up and decided to paint that one. So basically what I did when I looked at all the photos of this trip is I could not decide because I had quite a lot of photos that I really liked. So I thought it might be nice to do a series of them in the sketchbook. So I did them all portrait. Uh, the only problem is they're quite small. So they're like mini, basically like a mini little diary of the day. So I'm using the Hemi Jelly Gouache as the base, which I was gonna do a video about these when I first got them, but then I started using them and I've literally been using them for like two months now. So I probably won't do a video on them, but you will see them pop up every now and then. I'm really enjoying the Hemi Jelly Gouache. I didn't think I would because I thought they were just like a trend because they were super popular and everyone was using them. But um, I actually was pleasantly surprised by them. They're really fun to work with and mix and I've been having a lot of fun using them. So I was using the jelly gouache and I just, basically what I did is I went through all of them in a row and I did all the paint first and then I did all the pencil first and then I did all the neo color. But uh, the way that I've edited this video is I split it up a little bit. So you're just gonna see the first picture and then the second and the third, but you may get some spoilers along the way. Whoops, um, I probably should have thought about that while I was drawing. So what I was trying to say earlier is that the images are quite small on the page. I'm gonna have a big gap underneath them and I might fill those up with mini drawings. I might go back and complete the sketchbook spread. If I do, I'll probably pop it on Instagram because I think this one might turn into a nice little spread if I can complete it. So this first image was on the wrong side of the hill. I wanted to include that because it was quite a big part of our walk, like the first 20 minutes. And I really loved the view of the forest and especially how the forest was so, so dark and you, the trees looked very light against the shadow of it. So I kind of tried to do that with the colored pencils. Not sure exactly how well I did, but it's just a little sketch and I think it turned out quite nice. But what we're gonna do, Martin's taking a photo and then we're gonna head down the way we came and try and find the right path up there. We think we found it. There's actually a proper path. Woohoo! I think we're about halfway up the hill, and this is the view just from halfway point. It's amazing. This is how far we got to go. So the second picture was at the halfway point and I love these two little trees against the fog and the uh, mountains beyond. So I decided to do that one. 
Uh, you'll see at the end, I kind of misjudged how big to draw the trees. I only ended up drawing one tree, which is a bit of a shame, but that that happens sometimes, you know, if you misjudge how big things are meant to be or small things are meant to be. It's all about making the practicing with the eyes, right? Artist words. So for those of you who don't know, we've moved to the Lake District, which is a national park in uh, the north of England. We're lucky enough to live in a little village inside the Lake District, but there's also lots of towns around it. And uh, there was a guy called Alfred Wainwright who many years ago, he did a whole series of books mapping out the different fells and mountains around the Lake District. And uh, he's illustrated them all and he's written all the different paths and routes that you can take. So Martin and I, before we moved here, we knew that we wanted to do the Wainwright challenge, which is like basically you walk all of the fells. And this isn't a fell, it's actually an outlying fell. So we thought it was one of the Wainwrights, but sadly it wasn't. It was a very easy first walk in the Lake District though, and it was a lot of fun. So I'm glad it was our first one. There. We did it. We did it. <laughs> Not too shabby. So we made it to the whole gummer's how. That was our first fell. How do you how do you fell about it, Martin? Yeah, it was, it was good. So this is the third image that I took from the top, looking over at the fog. And the fog below is actually Lake Windermere, which was completely hidden. I do want to go back when it's clearer, maybe when it's a little bit warmer. Um, one of the things I'd really love to do while we're in the Lake District is to do a series of videos, but also outings for myself, where I kind of take myself on little trips. Because while I do really enjoy going for walks with Martin, um, sometimes it's nice just to be alone, not having to worry about taking up someone's time or you know, if they want to move on, um, things like that. So I think it might be nice to do a few little artist dates with myself. And this would be a good one because it's only about 20 minutes from the house, quite an easy little drive. And if you get there early enough, there will be car parking. We got there at about eight o'clock in the morning. And by the time we had got back to the car at about 11.30, it was jam packed and the all the road was completely filled up with cars as well. So yeah, get there early if you want to do it. So where all this fog is down there is actually a lake. I think on a clear day you'd be able to see Lake Windermere down there. But it is beautiful with all that fog. So this is the last image going down and I really loved all the trees that were kind of standing up and you could see through the branches. It was a lot harder to paint than I expected. I do really want to improve my trees. I think I've gotten better at them. I think I need to do more observational drawings though to kind of get like them looking right because doing the leaves on this was a little bit difficult. You'll see in the end I kind of just scribble lines on and hope for the best which is pretty much how I work. If you've been watching my videos for a while you will hear have heard me say that I try things and hope for the best a lot. It's basically my motto for life. But as far as these little paintings go, I really enjoyed doing them. I did them at the weekend uh, in my art studio. It was a nice kind of gray day outside and I was just chilling out with my sketchbook. It was quite difficult to get this path right because of the perspective. Um, I'm not really a realistic at all. Like I, I probably should try a little bit better to be more realistic when it comes to things like perspective with buildings and paths and things going into the, into the distance because here you can't really tell what goes downhill and also the separation between the different, uh, you know, foreground, background, midground is kind of all the same. I think that's what I really struggle with in my landscapes at the moment is that separation between background and foreground and midground. Uh, so that's something I definitely want to work on, but as, I mean, I really like this spread. I think it's really colorful. And while the images aren't super realistic and you can't really tell what they are, I think when you see them all together at the end, uh, they kind of are all cohesive. They all uh, match each other. And I think it's just a nice little, nice little colorful doodle page. So as with the other ones, I'm coming in with the details with my Caran d'Ache pencils, which I absolutely love. I love these pencils so much. I'm so happy that I started using them. Uh, and that I, you know, I bought them. They're so much nicer than the Polychromos, which I was using for maybe three, three and a half years before I started these. So I do have some other pencils I'm gonna try um, in the future, which you might see pop up on the YouTube video. But for now, these guys 
I mean, they're my faves. So then I come in at the end with the Neo colors just for a little bit of zhuzhing up. And I didn't show these on the other pictures because I didn't want you to have any spoilers. I didn't actually use a lot of the Neo colors. I picked maybe five different colors and then I used them quite sparingly, mainly for the sky or a little bit of lightening here and there. So uh, yeah, that's about it really. And then at the end, I pull all the washi tape off, which is the most satisfying part. I don't show that here. So you're just gonna have to imagine it yourself, I guess. So I hope you enjoyed that little trip up Gummer's Howe and some art kind of shoved in there places. Uh, if you like this video and want to see more, let me know because we're planning on doing lots more walks and I would love to do uh, videos like this in the future, maybe a little bit more planned out with the art. I think that might be nice. So that is all for me today. Have a lovely rest of your week and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.